Hey YouTube, what's up? It's uh, Labor Day weekend right now when I'm shooting this video and I uh, got a little bit of time off of work so I thought I'd let you guys know what the actual plans are for the Trailblazer as it sits right now. So as it currently sits, it's completely bone stock. Um, I've not really done anything to it except for what I'll show you and they're really not big modifications. So first things you probably won't notice is down here. These are where the factory fog lights would have been, and now on models that didn't come with them, they had a uh, plastic grate that went across them, and it's real easy, I just cut them out with a pocket knife, popped them out because I've got some lights that I'm planning on mounting down there, and uh, you really can't even tell when you look at the vehicle without them in there, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, coming into the vehicle... I also tried to make this video before it got a little bit too messy. Come in and see. I actually replaced the uh, mirror in here with this lane changer one that I actually pulled out of my Dakota that my grandpa had, had. So it's... This mirror is actually probably older than this car. But what I love about it, and I can't really find it anywhere else, is that this top mirror there allows me to see out of all of the back windows at the same time so effectively I don't have a blind spot anymore in my mirrors and I really I really value that especially considering that the reason that my uh, 04 trailblazer that you guys never got to see got in an accident so quickly was somebody coming out of my blind spot so I'm a little bit paranoid about that but uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I've really been enjoying that. I've still got the factory mirror. The only thing that it doesn't do with this is you'll see. Right there, there's a little cable. What actually happened was that there was a, uh, the factory passenger airbag symbol was on the underside of the mirror. And so, no, I can't tell when the passenger airbag is on, but at the same time, not super concerned about it. Now, the back is a little bit of a mess right now, um, but in here you'll see all of my future plans for this vehicle. Uh, most of these electrical components should all be done sometime in the next week. I've actually got an appointment at the shop, uh, but I'm going to have to do it, mostly because I unfortunately don't have the time during my work week to do any of these. So first things first, that stock radio is getting replaced by this dual XNAV touchscreen unit with Bluetooth. Um, I've been using a uh, FM transmitter that's been working really well, but to actually have Bluetooth in my vehicle um, is something that I'd really appreciate and enjoy because mostly I don't listen to the radio that much. I tend to just use Spotify. It's a generational thing, I guess, but. Um, I just prefer to listen to the music that I want to listen to, not just whatever's playing on the radio. Um, so this already came out of the 2004 Trailblazer that got wrecked. And so it has the uh, mounting brackets and everything else. So it should pop straight in, like just in and out, real quick. Shouldn't have any other issues with it. Um, this is just the, uh, the faceplate, and it actually came with a little... Uh, remote for it. That'll probably never get used, but I kept all the paperwork that I could. Um, right here, you will actually see the uh, lights that I plan on mounting to the underside where the fog lights would be. These are night lights. Uh, I want to say the 4x4 spots. I ended up going with spotlights over floodlights because I'm planning on using these as a uh, fog light for the most part and driving lights and so I wanted it to be able to reach out as far as I could and reach out past where my factory brights would go and so the plan as it sits right now there's a piece of metal that crosses right down there these will pop in and they'll be sitting right in there uh, with that these lights I picked up for like 20 bucks on Amazon uh, they've got really good reviews for that price and I don't plan on seeing a ton of use out of them, and I don't need them to light up an entire cornfield or anything like that, so 
hopefully they'll work for my purposes. Uh, they do not come with a wiring harness, but with that, I picked up their wiring harness with, I spent an extra two dollars just to get something kind of fun. The toggle switch, it's got a Sasquatch on it, Sasquatch lights. It's just kind of a running joke with me, my friends, my family. I'm a uh, I'm the better part of six foot five, almost six foot six, and as it stands right now, about 280 pounds with a big bushy Sasquatch beard, and so it's a uh, kind of a running joke that people call me Sasquatch or anything like that. And so that's going to get mounted into the factory mounting plate. So this is where, on a factory vehicle that had fog lights in it where the fog light switch would be. They left the plate in there though so you can um, put in switches right there. So the plan is to have that switch up on this top portion and if I ever get other lights in the future like a light bar or something like that I will put just a simple round toggle down there so I'll be able to fit the two switches at the same place. And if I get really nice lights like uh, roof rack lights or something like that I'll probably rewire it so that whatever lights that are stronger and I like more will be the Sasquatch lights, but that's really just kind of a cosmetic thing. Uh, moving on, the other thing that I was hoping to do is that since this monitor on the radio is compatible with a backup camera, I picked one up on Amazon. It's supposed to mount to the uh, license plate. And I'll see what the shop wants to do with it. My only concern is that mounting it on the license plate and running the uh, cord, I'm not actually sure where you'd be able to run the cord through because they've got AV cables in it. And so you'd either have to run it through here, up, back, down, and over, or try and run, run it along the roof line, but that's not really doing great. So what I was thinking about doing is actually mounting it right here above the hitch. I'd be kind of out of sight, out of mind. It would help me with backing into a uh, trailer if I needed to. And that way I'd be able to just tuck it right up next to the uh, tail light wires, run it straight in through the firewall, and not really have any issues with it. Pretty much a straight shot. See, the only other thing that I've got sitting here right now, if you guys noticed early on, is this Rough Country box. I uh, picked up their Rough Country 2-inch leveling kit. I ended up going with the Rough Country kit uh, over the, Arc, the Mark MCs or the Super Lifts or anything like that. For the simple fact, that these were on sale for $89. And I really don't need a massive lift if I put too much of a lift I'd need bigger tires and you can only get up to a 31 and a half on trailblazers without wheel spacers due to that little sucker right there and so my plan is to go wider not necessarily taller for this next set of tires um, these are kind of dry rotted and need replaced before the winter just so that I have faith in them they get kind of squirrely on wet pavement and the dry rot really doesn't uh, instill a lot of faith in me in them. They are Toyo Open Country ATs, which I'm sure are phenomenal tires when they're new, but these look like they've sat on the vehicle for a couple more years than they probably should have. And so I will be replacing them with uh, hand-cooked Dynapro ATs. Um, and instead of going from the factory 245-65-17s, I will be upping to a 255 65 17, which only gets me about an inch more height, but it'll give me significantly more width and more stability. And with the uh, changing in the ride handling uh, properties of the vehicle, I want that extra width and that extra grip. Because realistically, this vehicle is going to see mostly on road performance but I want to still be able to not get stuck whenever I go park at uh, hiking trails or different things like that that have kind of washed out dirt roads and things like that. 
Like I want this trailblazer to actually still be able to get me to a trail and not having any issues with it. And so I think those hand cooks will be a good value for that, um, especially at those sizes. And because they have some of the best winter ratings for all-terrain tires, I actually looked at some general grabber AT2s, but their snow and ice ratings weren't that great. And while I don't get a ton of snow around here, what we do tend to get here in Southern Illinois is big ice storms where you get almost a quarter inch of ice covering everything and it's hard to salt through, you can't plow them. And so things get really slick and things can shut down really quick. And so to have such a high ice rating on them, because they're a very siped all-terrain tire, I'm uh, looking forward to that. What I don't have with me right now in this kit, which by the way, if you just want to see it, this is the front spacer. It'll go under the strut spring. Uh, in the front, the back is just a uh, three quarter inch synthetic spacer that may or may not ever keep its loft. I'm quite sure it'll probably just compress over the years, especially if I tow anything with it too heavy. <coughs> But with these, I have coming in the mail some uh, Bilstein, I think is how you pronounce them, uh, gas charge performance shocks. I got the uh, 5100 series on them because they're the ones that are designed to be able to accommodate a lift in the front and are up to two and a half inches in the front and one inch in the rear of lift off of stock. And while you can probably get away with just a two inch on normal Bill Steins, because I was looking for a performance shock to kind of tighten everything up and just really give me the best on-road handling that I could with the travel for off-road purposes, which will be fairly limited in this vehicle, especially because I have that for off-road fun now. I just wanted the best that I could, because especially if I'm adjusting anything with the suspension, I'd like to have it done right. The black truck over there, for better or for worse, was kind of a Franken truck. And everything was just kind of redneck together in some way or another. And it works for what it is, but on this one I'd like to try and do it all right, especially while I have the ability to. And so yeah, I'll be running the Rough Country 2-inch leveling kit with Handcook 255, 65, 17 uh, Dynapro ATs or ATMs with um, the Bilstein 5100 series gas charge shocks and I'm looking to get all the suspension components and the tires done at once so just like I'm doing all the electrical components uh, actually this next week next week I'm getting them done so I'll have an update on that at some point I'm looking sometime probably in October before it starts getting too cold and everything starts getting too variable I'm gonna get the lift shocks struts and tires all thrown on at the same time and hopefully that'll be it for updates on this for a while other than maintenance and fun stuff but uh, yeah I'm gonna cut this off because it's been a lot longer than I thought I talked way more than I probably should have so this is my again my 2008 Chevy Trailblazer LS um, that I'm looking to uh, kind of build out a little bit just kind of an, an everyman sort of build uh, just get a little bit more cosmetics and a little bit more off-road capability and some performance handling. So um, if you like this video, like, subscribe, do what you got to do. If you want to see updates on this, make sure you uh, click the little bell and get the updates from my channel because these things come out pretty sporadically. And uh, again, just like, subscribe, do what you got to do. I'll see you all in the next one.